what's up YouTube so in this video we will be discussing the subject of how do you top coat sand and cement yes this is really the final process in the rendering series that we've been doing on the channel about how do you render a house we've gone through the whole process uh, from setting beads to render gripping to mixing up to scratch coating and now we are going to be looking at doing the top coat so what we're going to do in this video is we're going to just show you uh, a brief overview of how we go about uh, top coating uh, the sand and cement. Now what we'll also do as well is we'll just do a slight separate video on the ruling off process but also the floating up process as well for those that are interested in a little bit more detail about the specifics behind the ruling off and the floating up. But for this video we will be discussing the top coating process. Now in the job that we're on, the one that you've been watching us uh, throughout the last few weeks, we're actually coming to the very end of this uh, house. We're actually just going to be top coating the front. And we've been here just over a week. Now if I show you where we're at right now, you'll see that uh, the backside of the house uh, has all been uh, floated up and the side of the house here has also been floated up uh, it rained quite a bit over the weekend which is why you can it sort of almost looks a little bit uh, a dark gray in places where there's still moisture coming out of the render uh, but for the most part it actually floated up uh, very nice for those that uh, follow us on our Instagram channel uh, the uh, the name is here it's plastering underscore Alex Morley you'll see that uh, we put some photos of the um, the side in the back of the house uh, having already been top coated uh, quite a while ago so for those that follow us there you would have already seen how it looks uh, but this is what we're going to be top coating uh, to today so it'll obviously be the whole top section and obviously the 45. Now it's gonna be a bit of a tough day for me to, uh, because uh, Louis isn't well, unfortunately. So I'll be doing all the work. So the mixing up, the bumping of the gear and the uh, top coating all on my own while I was trying to record a video. Um, in reality, I probably should have just uh, booked this job in for another day, but it's quite a small front of the house. So I thought I would take the risk. So anyway, uh, that is what we will be doing today. So we're gonna take you through that process. We hope you enjoy the video, stick around, possibly give it a thumbs up and subscribing if you enjoy the content. Now, one of the first processes, which is very important when it comes to rendering uh, and your top coating, is to make sure that you hydrate the wall. Now, um, this front section of the wall was at the house was actually uh, one of the first walls that we actually scratch coated so it has been sitting on there for about four or five days that's no big deal the sand and cement would still be considered green it's not cured in any way but it is very important that you wet this down and we are talking hosing it down properly now it rained over the weekend so there will be moisture in the render already but it will not be enough it is so important that for the waterproofer to work properly and give you plenty of time to work on the render, you need to hose the wall down really well. So it's, you know, you can see we've got the hose uh, set up, ready to go. We'll be spraying this down for probably for a good five to 10 minutes, if not longer. Now it is, um, it is an overcast day, so it should be fairly reasonable. We've used really good uh, quality waterproofer in a scratch coat, so I should have plenty of time even on my own but you do see some that maybe just flick water with a brush or they just use a weed killer sprayer. That is not enough. You will be making your life an awful lot harder. Now I know with Feb proof, it is a very good uh, waterproofer. So if I know the section is actually quite small and I know it's not gonna be particularly sunny, then I might choose not to sprawl wet the wall down knowing that I don't wanna be waiting all day. Uh, but if you wanna be able to put all the render on in one go and then spend the rest of the day floating up, you need to really hydrate the wall. So that's what we're gonna do now. But it's also very important when you've hydrated the wall that you need to leave it for about five or 10 minutes to let the surface water soak in 
so it isn't sitting on top of that surface. So we're actually gonna spray the wall down and then we're gonna mix up after. So we're actually gonna uh, do that right now. On to applying the render. So uh, we've knocked up our sand and cement. Now, what I will say is that usually you should start from the top of the house and work down. And the reason being is that uh, render is quite messy. It's very easy to drop render on the floor. Uh, so really you don't wanna be rendering below and then drop stuff on stuff you've already ruled off. However, here, if the sun comes out, it really hits this house hard. So as such, what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna do the lower section first where it's in the shade and then do the top section above, which will probably dry at a much faster rate. So that's why we're doing it the other way around. Now the uh, principle of applying the render is exactly the same. And that is that really if you're right handed you should go right to left. The reason being, as we've mentioned in the scratch coat video, is the concept is that you're always building on what you've already done. My honest opinion, I don't think there's an awful lot in it. And the reason being is that when you're applying the render, I always just go straight up about a foot, 12 inches, something like that. Um, with the render that usually is about uh, right for a trowel fall. Uh, so I just go straight up, move along straight up. So there's not really any building up as it were. However, as I mentioned in the scratch coat, if you do that anyway, whether you agree with it or not, at least you know, it looks like you know what you're doing. Um, I am aware of the concept behind it. I don't think there's much in it. Um, but if you're right-handed, go right to left, left-handed, left to right. It's basically the exact opposite of what you would do with plastering. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna just start applying that render now. Unfortunately, the, <laughs> the bucket, the, the render's actually um, slightly out of camera shot. And the reason being is because we've mixed up in a bath. We needed the ground to be relatively level. And uh, the furthest, uh, the closest place is, is, is just behind the camera uh, a bit. So unfortunately, I'll be going out of shot quite a bit. But if we just start here, all we're gonna do is just knead the cement a little bit, just get some of the air out of it trowel on the wall underneath and then you're just going to push the render quite firmly into the scratch coat. What you'll find is if you've, if you've done the render just a little bit wetter it's, it stays on the wall a lot easier. But nice and firm like so. Really push that up. Seen quite a few renderers. Um, you see them put it on and they're going backwards and forwards or up and down like this, really kneading it in. Um, you, when you're applying the render, you want firm pressure and in our opinion, you're, you're pushing up. Um, you certainly don't want to pull down. The reason being is render is a very, sand and cement is a very heavy product. And it, if you pull down, you'll be working with gravity. It will try and rip the product off. Um, the biggest mistake that I see with rendering um, are those that don't know what they're doing or they're just getting into it is they play with the render far too much. Um, again, I know Blaine's mentioned this before in, in his videos uh, that when you constantly trowel over the top of render, you pull the water out of it and you'll actually rip it off the wall. So just apply the render as fast as you can. Don't worry about what it looks like. Just nice firm pressure, apply it on the wall, you know, at a nice steady pace. And then once you've done a section, then we'll look at ruling that off. So don't worry about what it looks like. So I just need the render underneath it. Nice firm pressure. Now you will notice in this uh, render, unfortunately there's a lot of stones in the sand. Um, some of the eagle-eyed viewers would have noticed that very early on in the series, we were using a different brand of sand. Um, unfortunately, we've had some issue with this supplier before. We used them for years, but just this season, they've had some terrible sand out of a particular branch. And so we had to switch it out for different sand, but fortunately the downside is for whatever reason, it's quite a few stones in this sand. Um, so you might see a few drag marks or is flicking them out, but that's why. So always where possible, buy as best quality sand as you, as you can. You don't want to overload your hawk. You've got to remember, certainly if you're doing this on your own, you can see all the stones here. Um, if you're doing this on your own, um, by the end of the day, uh, by the end of the day, you're going to feel like 
you've rendered a house on your Todd. So make your life easier, don't overload the hawk. It just, it makes it really hard for your elbow, it makes you really tired. You know, when it comes to, you know, trying to be a hero overloading your hawk, trying to smash out massive sets, things like that. You know, the reality is there are no medals for putting yourself in the hospital or putting yourself out of the game. So this is such a hard trade, which is why it pays so well. Um, but you have to look after yourself. So don't be stupid by overloading your hawk so you can barely get it off uh, with the trowel. So for us, we just think a couple of scoops with the bucket trowel, that's about enough. Um, you know, if you work sensibly, take your time. And if you've done your prep work, you should be able to hit some fairly reasonable size set, you know, sections of house. Um, if you just work sensibly. Okay, so with this section here, what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna leave that for a bit. Um, I'm just gonna put it on time-lapse for a bit, just hit this, this section here, and then we'll come back to have a look at ruling it off. So Okay, so this uh, section here uh, is on now. I've just thrown it on uh, over the last sort of five, 10 minutes. Um, and now um, we'll be looking at ruling this off. Now, as the same as the scratch coat, uh, you're going to want to use something like this. This is called a feather edge. I think this one is from Rafina. It might be from Ox, I'm not entirely sure. Um, and essentially they have a uh, pointed edge on them there. Uh, I think Ox also do uh, another one uh, which is a feather edge that's got a rounded uh, edge on it which I actually prefer but I cannot find one of those for love nor money so Ox if you've got one kicking around in your hair house somewhere please send me one because I can't buy one anywhere uh, but anyway um, this uh, render not only is it on very thick it's also uh, very wet. Now some would say probably a little bit too wet. Um, this is done by design because it's on so thick the thicker it is um, the easier it is to render uh, to rule off when it is wet. Now I am expecting for it to uh, tear a little bit uh, because of how thick it is. This is totally normal. I'm not fussed. All I want to do is rule it off so it gets it within the ballpark of where I want it to be then I'm going to let it pull, pull in then just apply another tight top coat a little bit later. But the general um, gist of ruling off, at least how we like to do it, generally I prefer the uh, angled part um, pointing downwards. I personally, I like to use what you'd probably consider the back of it uh, to rule off. It just works better for me. And then just initially, so you always got to remember that because there's the most amount of product on the wall, you need to work pulling up uh, to take that excess off. If you were to go sideways first, what you would actually find is that it would um, it would just fall on the floor. It would just slide straight down the feather edge and drop on the floor. So again, you're fighting gravity here, so pull up um, first. Now, here we're going between two beads, but if I was to go within, um, if I was to go right into the bead straight away, I don't know how easy you can see this. Let's adjust the angle. Hello. Um, you can see it's on very, very thick. So I actually have to do a lighter pass, possibly for the first few times. You can see how thick that is. I just act in a slight slicing motion, just to try and take some of this out. Um, did I need to put that much on? No, of course I didn't, but I did. I prefer just to really put on quite a bit of it. So if this was dry, this would actually be quite difficult to get off. Um, I say that excessive tearing is just because of how thick it is. Oh, 
after each time you want to unload it and at a slight angle and just a slight slicing motion just to kind of try and break that suction a little bit what you actually find is that if you just pull straight up with almost without doing that scissoring action and actually the render sort of gets stuck on the wall and it can actually tear it clean off so I also prefer just to have the feather etcher at, at a slight angle rather than straight on uh, for me personal preference I just think it rules a bit better if you have any stones in it you'll actually hear it as it's going past so there's quite a few of these annoying little things again poor quality sand I'm afraid um, just take them out as you go have a couple there and yeah, nice little wiggle up again more more stones here um, it is quite annoying um, but unfortunately it is the nature of rendering unfortunately sometimes you can see as you're taking more and more product off uh, the neater it's starting to look if, it's, if you're finding that you're struggling to roll it off as in the the straight edge is getting stuck on the wall is probably because you're trying to take too much off so just pull the feather edge back off the render a little bit and just do several light passes over the top of it just skimming the top of it off um, and then gradually work your way towards the bead another stone so you can see here this was obviously a very thick section here is still not at the bead but what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to just slice it at an angle so it hits that uh, doesn't hit it all at one time you, re you can really start seeing the stones in the sand now probably find one of the neighbours has probably thrown off the beach you know loads and loads of stones right so that is now pretty close to the bead um, now what um, what we're now going to do is we're just going to leave that section so we're going to carry on ruling through but we're going to leave this section for about five ten minutes and then what I like to do is just come back over and do a really tight coat and the reason being is that what you find is when the render is on very thick and you're ruling off you can actually uh, pull off more render than you mean to and actually goes past the bead you often find if you put this uh, the straight edge against the two beads there's actually a bit of a hollow in it so if you just go back over it again after five ten minutes do a really tight skim over it not when it's gone completely dry but just a tight skim over it leave it another five ten minutes and then rule it off again I have found you just get a much nicer finish. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna go over the rest of this wall, uh, ruling off, uh, and we'll have a look at it once it's done. Okay, so we have uh, allowed this to pull in quite a bit, and uh, what we've done is we've just done a tight coat over the top of it. So what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna rule that off again for the second time. Uh, again, don't be surprised if there's any uh, severe scratch marks in this. There is a lot of stones in this mix for some reason. Uh, so if you're seeing scratch marks, it's likely the stones. What we're actually going to do is we use a long one as well. So what we were using just to initially rule off, we were using the 1200. Uh, for this one, we're going to use the two meter. Uh, it's probably not really necessary for um, between these beads, uh, but certainly for the bottom half of the wall, uh, it make life easier. Right. You'll, uh, you'll have to excuse the ridiculous looking uh, headphones as well. I'm working on my own, it's a bit boring. So, I've got music playing. When it comes to uh, doing the lower section, what I like to do is get the long straight edge and then just go from the window to the corner bead at the bottom and just rule that out and that just sort of gives you a little bit of a, a reference to go to like so I don't know how visible it is on the camera here but you can just see here now we've got this line that we can work to 
So use the long one, slight angle, I'm just going to roll off, bit of a roll off. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to, because this bit here is quite fiddly because of the scaffold pole, I'm just going to switch it out for the shorter one, um, just to make my life a little bit easier. It is worth having more than one size of feather edge, it just makes your life a little bit easier in the long run. Uh, so we've started uh, the floating up process, uh, unfortunately needless to say, because it's a large flank and I'm on my own, uh, I've had to kind of really get moving quite a bit, so we haven't actually been able to record as much of the floating up as I'd like. Now, for the most part, the uh, top part of the house is pretty much floated up. It's a little drier than I would have liked, uh, but I think it'll be okay. The bottom half is in a bit better condition. Now, I have just run the power float uh, quickly over the top of this wall here, just to initially flatten it in. And you'll see here uh, that you've obviously got low spots against the bead and what have you. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use <coughs> A polythene float like this one. Now, uh, we have mentioned uh, using these before. Now, this I think is a 12 inch uh, Amir polythene float. Um, we do have some of the larger Rafina ones, the diamond floats, they're okay. Um, but for compressing render, in our opinion, uh, these are the best. Now, uh, when we did the hand float versus uh, power float video, we, we discussed these and why we thought these were the best. Now, it's very important to understand what the job of a float is, what it's actually doing, and it is not to get the render flat. I think we mentioned in uh, one of our earlier videos that when you're doing the scratch coat, you're looking to get about 70 to 75% of the wall flat, uh, and then the uh, the top coat is maybe getting another 20 to 22%. And, and the, really, the hand float is only getting maybe one or 2%, if that, uh, flat. And if anything, um, there's something called the devil's hour where you see the light raking down the wall and it looks really wavy. That often looks much worse when it's been hand floated when the render is wet. And it's because these are not designed, regardless of how big it is, they're not designed to get the walls especially flat. Their job is to compress the render. As such, the smaller the float, the easier it is to compress. Um, if you're not sure, well, just think of the principle of uh, with shoes. Can you imagine if someone trod on your foot with a stiletto heel, straight on your foot, as opposed to someone uh, treading on your foot with just a normal shoe? The stiletto heel would hurt a lot more, and it's because the surface area is much, much smaller for the pressure being applied. It's the same here. 12 inch float you can get a lot more uh, pressure behind it in a smaller area. The key with it is to make sure the render has pulled in enough that it's not dragging the render about. So you can see here if I run the float over it, um, the render, if I was to pull you a bit closer so you can see, the render is not actually uh, moving a great deal. You can see it, it fills in the holes here it's not it's not being dragged around if, if you've got it where you're floating up and the render is being pushed about on the wall uh, that's a good sign that you're floating up too wet so the key with a good quality finish is to make sure that your ruling off is on point now unfortunately uh, we didn't get to do as much of that recording as we would have liked um, but the general principle of using the feather edge wherever it is 
um, really taking your time uh, ruling that off, uh, you'll get a much better finish. We will do another video just focusing on ruling off so you can see the process that we use. But understand that it's the ruling off that gets the wall nice and flat. It isn't the float, it's not the power float. So for those that recommended using massive hand floats, I understand what you're saying, and it helps a bit, but it doesn't compress the render as much as uh, what these do. Understand that to limit cracking, that happens when you compress the render. That's what actually stops the cracking. So it's easier to do on a smaller flow or a power float because you can put more weight uh, behind it. But what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna fill in. When it comes to the bead, you're pushing the render into the bead. It's really pushing quite hard. Um, a really decent amount of pressure um, just to get those to fill in. Now, um, I think as I've mentioned already, there's quite a few stones in the render, so I will be picking them out as I go. <laughs> so if you see any little drag marks, it's the stones. But what I'm gonna do is we're just gonna run the video uh, while I am floating up so you can just see the process. So uh, we are now at the point where we have floated up uh, these walls. It was a little bit of a fight, uh, as obviously being on your tod, there's quite a lot of work to do. But the point that the walls are at now is run a power float over them. And then I just, um, these bits were still a little bit wet when I first went over them. So uh, I gave them 10, 15 minutes and then went over them again. 45 has been done and around here as well. So <clears throat> the final stage of top coating sand and cement is that uh, you have to run a sponge over it. Now, uh, the ones we prefer to use are just um, these 99p ones, to be honest. Usually we buy four or five of them per job. And then all you're gonna wanna do is just run the sponge 
over over the render like so and the idea is that it just brings the aggregate up um, to the surface like so you'll find that where um, where the render's just a little bit drier um, the sand actually just goes a little bit fluffy um, the, the sand and goes a bit fluffy so just make sure you brush off that um, that sand off the surface you don't want to keep that on there um, like I say lightly the um, sponge is damp uh, but it's not really holding any water and you want to make sure that you clean uh, the sponge regularly um, you're supposed to use uh, clean water um, generally I just use whatever water I've got floating around um, but you'll probably get a better result if you use clean water but you can see just brush the brush the render like so nice I think circular motions what I try and do is do circular motions but going the opposite way uh, to how I floated it try and mix it up a little bit up here Here's done. You just really see that that aggregate coming up. When it comes to the um, 45, so what we've done is we've uh, we've done the. Um, the 45, they're, they're wet corners, so both sides of the 45 were done uh, at the same time. You just very carefully uh, sponge up and down. You see that fluffing there, the sand. Um, it's just where it was floated quite a long time ago and it was just a bit drier. It's not a big deal, just brush it off. It's nice to keep the bees nice and clean. You can see how nice and sharp that 45 looks now. But where you've got the wet edge, just gently, just run the brush, the sponge down, let's say. What I like to do afterwards is just use um, a straight edge. So I've got a, um, a plastic spatula that's about the size of that. And what I'll do is I'll just uh, run that into the corner um, just to sharpen that edge up a little bit. The reason why I don't like doing um, opposites on a 45 on render is that um, I actually find that it cracks a little bit. Uh, it does tend to crack an, a little bit when you're um, uh, when you put uh, wet render up against uh, a wall that was rendered already. So uh, to get that dry, sharp edge, I just find it cracks occasionally. So um, if you can do a wet edge, I find it generally looks a bit better. Um, same here, just a nice light brush. Just as a um, something to look out for, if you're seeing um, sponge marks, um, if you're seeing sponge marks on the render when you're rubbing up, uh, that is usually a sign that the render is just a little bit too wet for the sponge, or you're pushing a bit too hard. So just uh, leave it a little bit longer. Uh, and go over it again in about five ten minutes and those sponge marks should come out because they do actually come through on the paint it doesn't look uh, it doesn't look great in my opinion so yeah you want to regularly keep cleaning the sponge out as you can see my water is not very clean but to be honest with you it's really uh, wrong out so I don't think it makes any difference to be perfectly honest with you this was uh, floated up hours ago so it's really dry but it's really in the um, I don't think it's really going to be seen to be honest with you 
in here. This bit down here is, is a little bit wet still because um, it's been in the shade. The, the homeowner's uh, van has, has obviously been blocking the sun all day. So you can see that's those scratch marks I was referring to where this is very, very wet <laughs> still. Um, but it is, the day is as long as it were. So we're gonna do our best to try and get a decent finish. Um, it's not really going to be seen, so it's not a big deal, to be honest with you. Gently. Up. Like so. You can really see those uh, scratch marks and the uh, that the sponge is leaving. It's to say it's just where where the render's a little bit. It's a little bit wet. There we go. I think uh, that's about done, I think. So, if you were to have a look now, there's a bit of a, there's a bit of a slog. I need to clean the roof off. I didn't really cover it properly again because the, uh, because there's a cleaner coming in. A terrible size hit for for someone working on their own today so that's pretty much it I've got to just do a, a few little touch-ups here and there um, where the kicker brick is what we've been doing is just um, scoring a straight line in the render just onto the kicker brick just so it looks a little bit neater um, just to sharpen it up a little bit which we'll do when that render's pulled in a little bit but other than that, that is uh, pretty much it. Unfortunately, um, we were hoping to uh, show just a little bit more in detail the process um, that we use for top coating. Unfortunately, uh, being on my own today, having to hit the whole of the front of this house has uh, uh, certainly, you don't have an exuberant amount of time uh, to get the work done. So uh, hence why some of the more nitty gritty little techniques uh, weren't, uh, weren't shown in the video uh, but that generally um, that generally is it that is pretty much uh, how you top coat uh, um, the sand and cement um, and for the most part other than the uh, cleaning we've just got to uh, run the reveals which we'll, we'll do tomorrow uh, off camera this job is is, is pretty much done um, I say the cleaner will come in um, clean all the windows and what have you uh, so we don't have to do it it looks an awful lot better when they do it so um, that part of the project will be done but once it's all cleaned up and everything's finished what we'll do is we'll just do a, a final uh, look round of the house when it's all buttoned up and done um, so you can see the completed job no doubt again for those that follow us on social media you'll see those uh, images uh, ahead of time of the final project completed so uh, we hope you enjoy the video we hope you found the content uh, helpful consider giving a thumbs up and subscribing if you enjoy uh, these videos on the channel and we look forward to seeing you on the next one thanks again